what's up guys my name is Nicole as most of you probably know I recently had the opportunity to partner with Jubilee and five other people in an episode of Spectrum where we considered the question do all Christians think the same as you might guess the answer was a resounding no as we considered and debated about topics like abstinence the LGBTQ community and the afterlife. Big stuff, I know, and the conversation definitely reflected that getting pretty tense at times, but the comments were a whole other ball game. Today I'm reacting to literally every comment I could find that was published in the first few days after the video dropped that had anything to do about me, plus a few bonus ones that I found interesting and wanted to address here. If you're new here, welcome to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you've watched the video, you know that there are two primary points where I give my perspective. The first is at the end of a long conversation about supporting the LGBTQ community. If you haven't seen Jubilee's video yet, please go back and listen to everyone's perspective so you can get some context for what exactly I'm responding to in this clip. But for the rest of you, here's a quick refresher of what I said. I just define support differently. Um, I think you can completely support somebody's right to love and feel love without supporting homosexual activity. Homosexual activity is sinful. Raping a child is sinful. We can argue about what's worse or what's more acceptable or what our society has normalized, but at the end of the day, we all sin. We all sin in different ways, and none of those sins should be celebrated. None of those sins should be condoned, and all of us should be working not to change who we are, but to become more like Christ. As you might have guessed, there were lots of reactions to what I said, both positive and negative. About three-fourths were the former, as you can see here. And of course, there was still that remaining 25% that disagreed with what I said. I don't want this video to just be another place on the internet to hash this issue out, but there were two threads that I do want to address here. Reading these two threads, I noticed a parallel. Both comments were initiated by someone who thought that I presented my perspective well, with respect to the other side, but without backing down from my own personal convictions. Similarly, both comments were responded to by someone who disagreed with my perspective, and thought that I presented the exact same perspective that Kaitia had, just in a more agreeable way. Personally, I'd hope both of those points would be accurate in describing my approach. I did not and do not shy away from affirming that the Bible does clearly name homosexuality as one of many sexual sins. No one can change that, no matter how much they want to. What I believe Christians should consider changing is their approach to people celebrating and actively engaging in sin, sexual or otherwise. Simply telling someone that they're morally wrong isn't enough. Instead, we should acknowledge that we are all equally fallen in different ways. None of us reaching the perfection that God designed us for. Thankfully, the unconditional love and grace of Jesus Christ covers every sin. And that's been enough for a whole lot of people the last few thousand years. Jesus calls us to sin no more and enables us to resist temptation with the help of the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit has the power to bring you to tears with empathy for people who continue to choose sin over savior. All right, on to round two, when we talk about waiting for sex until marriage. Here's that refresher clip for you. Actually not even kissing until I get engaged, which a lot of people don't believe me about, but I had a two year relationship and I promise it happened. And it was strong, right? I didn't particularly like it, but I just find so much strength and closeness to God in preserving my physical expression of love for people even though it's very, very far from easy, it's something I'm so excited for. To be able to tell that person, I saved this, the most intimate part of myself for you because God was the only one who had a key to my heart before this. Just gonna get one quick thing out of the way. No, I don't watch Girl Defined. I'm thinking I should based on all of these comments, but to tell you the absolute truth, I had no idea what that even was before reading them the last few days. As far as I could tell, there were three basic categories of responses to my commitment to not kiss until I'm engaged, let alone have sex until married. The first was pretty supportive. I appreciate it. The second group was grappling in confusion as to why in the world a young woman would make, let alone keep, such a promise. 
Some asked what I think were genuine and valid questions about that commitment, and others were in total shock. The third category was outright rejection, saying that my commitment to God, myself, and my future husband was nothing less than unhealthy and a waste of time, if not an outright lie. Some went as far as to offer their opinion that I would be alone forever because who would want a girl like that? And one person felt the need to congratulate my ex for displaying basic respect and self-control when I told him no. I don't share these to look for pity. I have enough confidence in myself and God to know that those accusations aren't true. To tell you the truth, I've heard from some that my story makes people feel ashamed that they didn't make a similar commitment or that they didn't abstain from sex until marriage or that they regret the choices that they made when they were in younger relationships. If your story includes rushing into things, making choices that now feel like mistakes, or holding on to regrets regarding physical affection, please know that those things do not make you less deserving of love. You don't have reduced value, and you are still capable of finding a fulfilling and God-honoring relationship if that's even what you want. I don't share my story to bring shame or to boost some superiority complex over you. I share it as one perspective on the topic of abstinence and as a testimony that putting even something small like a kiss on hold might deepen your relationship with your significant other or your spiritual relationship with God. I may talk about all of this more down the line, especially if that's something that you guys are interested in, but I think we'll leave it at that for now. Speed round. <laughs> Number one. Actually, I did high-five her, despite y'all claiming otherwise. Watch, I'll prove it. Right there. Right there. One more time. Right. There. Number two. My jeans actually fit great, but not when they have a mic pack sitting on the back pocket, so get over it. Three. Please stop blaming the people of the Christian church, who are just as broken as everyone else, for your decision to not follow the God of the Christian church. People are imperfect no matter who they worship. I'm sorry, but that is not a valid excuse for your conscious choice, enabled by God's gift of free will, to reject his perfect love for you. Number four, one of the prompts that got edited out completely in the final cut of the video was if we had all been raised by Christian parents. Personally, I've been incredibly blessed for that to have been my circumstance growing up, and of course, I'm not going to deny that that has had an influence on my faith. But like anything that your parents teach you, eventually you have to decide for yourself what to own and grow in and what to cast away for the sake of your own convictions. I am not a Christian because I have been brainwashed or never learned about other religions or lifestyles. I'm a Christian because I have my own personal relationship with Jesus. And it's really as simple as that. Number five? That. Yeah. Number five. I am single, but I haven't always been, and I don't plan to always be. Six. I'm pretty sure the Bible is clear about you either following God or not. It doesn't really matter if the people here meant what they said as a compliment or an insult. If they're talking about gradients of Christianity, they don't know what they're talking about. You're either for God or against him, and that's it. And now it's time for my favorite comments. Within a few days, I found between 70 and 75 of these comments, and it made my heart so happy. Thank you to each and every one of you who, instead of bashing someone you didn't agree with in the video, decided to spend your time and your voice on this platform to encourage someone who you did agree with. You all are the reason that YouTube has such an incredible potential to touch the world. What you're seeing now are the ones who said kind things about myself, but there were many more who encouraged Tyreus, Kaitia, Jason, Tyler, and Jasmine. There was a lot of negativity in the comments, but comments like these were pure gold. I think what I'm taking away from this experience is that while you can never please everyone, a message of truth presented in a loving and empathetic way resonates with people who actually care about that topic, even if they disagree with you. I actually didn't even share yet the two comments that touched me most. Two self-identifying atheists wrote these expressing respect and a willingness to continue the conversation with me. I saved these for last because I thought they were incredibly encouraging to me and affirmative of my goal throughout this conversation, which was to stay unwavering in my beliefs without isolating those who would argue the opposite. As a Christian, I carry with me a message of hope and love, which does absolutely squat if no one wants to hear it. 
So my many thanks to Jubilee for expanding the platform for all voices, including mine. If you guys haven't watched the Jubilee video yet, I strongly encourage you. I'd love to hear your comments reacting to that video as well as this one. So make sure to come back over once you have and tell me how you would have answered those prompts. Also, I'm so excited to say that I'm going to be in another Jubilee video very soon. This one on their series, Middle Ground. Make sure to check back here on my channel for the special behind the scenes look at the shoot. And let me know if you want me to do another comment reaction video by liking this one. I'm sure there will be plenty of material. Plus, there were a ton of comments on this one that had to do with theology that I didn't have time to address here, but I would love to go into all of that with you guys if that's something you're interested in. Let me know either way, but until then, God bless.